Alrighty, today I'm going to talk about my creation Joshua. He is a Krite from the movie Critters. And in order to create him, I knew he'd have fur, so I had to try and picture him being a little, uh, a little naked mud baby. And so I began to get to work with my carving using Monster Maker's medium grade oil based clay. Didn't look like much to begin with. Then I got the idea that I need to put eyes into the sockets to help make him more presentable. I found this eye at a yard sale several years ago and though it is of interesting design not quite what I'm looking for but it's the right shape and size so I made a silicone mold of it. I was still new to making silicone molds and I made it using commercial silicone instead of mold making silicone which made its dry time about 14 days now I found that the mold distorted it a little bit making it a little wider and everything but it was good enough to fill in for the face but to help prevent future castings coming out the same distorted way I use a plastic cup one of the small disposable kind and cut a portion of it like a ring filling that with silicone to help keep the edges from bowing out now with one black eye and the original eye the black eye being made of a substance called isomal which is a substitute sugar that I spray painted with a clear coat of plastic creating a partial moisture barrier which gave it more life and allowed me to really sculpt out the eyelids then came time to cast and because I knew that the back was going to be all fur I just cast the front of it and took off the arms and feet to cast those separately as you can see here and here I did find something interesting. Even though I sprayed that clear plastic coating to act as a partial moisture barrier on the ice malt eye, the plaster of Paris mixture scratched through that barrier on the exposed part of the eye, subjecting it to moisture and causing the ice malt to crystallize just where the eyelids did not cover. However, the mold came out well and I was able to cast in some flesh tone Monster Maker latex and came out with this fleshy skin stuff. Now I used wood doweling and some plastic tubing hinged together with eye screws to make a flexible skeletal form that will go inside of my creation. As I began attaching these pieces together, I found that the mouth did not quite open as far as I wanted, so I abridged the gap using spandex coated in latex. With portions the way I wanted them to, I began to paint, creating the animal-like fleshy textures of speckling and striping, being sure to get dark around the eyes, kind of like a raccoon. With no more need of the wax-based clay I used to sculpt little Joshua, my clay baby, melted him down, and you can almost hear him screaming, No! Help me! I'm melting! Anyway, while I had been working on that part of the project, I had also began work on the mandible. Using a sheet of clay, I carved out the basic design and used toothpicks to help secure in all the teeth. I believe there were about 64 teeth on each palette. On the top half, I even created a uvula and some tonsils to help give it a more living feeling. Though, to be fair, if a prite had a uvula, he probably wouldn't be able to swallow as much as he normally would due to the gag reflex. Once the clay jaws were finished, I secured them on cardboard for the mold making and created a fairly hefty plaster of Paris mold. Now the mold had to be hefty not only because of, of the teeth, but also because of my plan. See, within these molds, I cast in the latex, which turned out well with minimal air bubbles on the teeth, and that gave me a flexible barrier to be able to melt some ice malt and pour it in to make a hard palate to serve as a main structure for the puppet. I could 
then attach the hinges and the leather straps so that I can open and close the mouth. Now as you can see I also had to spray the Osmalt with the clear plastic layer but because of the heat difference even at room temperature it caused it to crack. Luckily Osmalt has been easy to melt and reforge and I found that by leaving the Osmelt in the fridge before spraying on the coat it prevents it from cracking. With these mandible plates intact I began to paint on the latex printing fleshy gummy tones and finally adding in the subtle details that really bring life to the structure causing aging on the teeth as well as not quite bleeding but darker reds floating among the gums. Before attaching the mandibles together, I coated them with five minute epoxy to give them that wet, moist look as though there's saliva in his mouth. I also had to size out the tongue, which I made a plastic bread bag that I trimmed using paper as a barrier for a wood burner that sealed the edges of the plastic bag and allowed me to get the proper shape that I wanted. I did find that the paints I was using did not like to adhere to the plastic bag. So I had to rub on some clear rubber, rubberized glue called E6000 in order to keep the paint adhering and flexible on the bag. Now with the mandibles, tongue, and flesh in place, I had to prepare for the next step by improve my skills of making eyes. Using the original yellow eye, I made a new silicone mold using a method I found on the internet in which you wedge in essentially soapy water. Now this method was supposed to help the silicone cure faster because of glycerin in the soap. However, most soaps don't contain glycerin. And so this method only served to add small bubbles of air throughout the silicone. With all the air bubbles cured after about two or three days. Now I did leave the edge of the plastic cup around it to make sure it holds its form. The Osmalt eyes I made from this mold were of better form and shape as you can see here. I also experimented with different means of supporting the eyes for painting and manipulation. One I attached to a wood doweling, the other I attached to a paintbrush handle to see which is more beneficial for my purposes. I also wanted to test to see if a pupil dug in to the surface of the eye would look better than one just painted on the surface. As you can see here, I used a wood burner to carve in the slit of the monstrous eye. After painting, I found fairly little difference between the eye with the slit and the eye that was just merely painted on. I had incredible amounts of fun making the capillaries of the eye using black yarn to accent against the red paint of the eye. Now, as you can see, these really brought more life to the eyes, but because it was still ice malt and subject to the elements, I also coated the structure with a layer of five minute epoxy which gives it kind of glassy shine to it uh, a wet feeling now with the eyes essentially finished I had to develop an apparatus to make work. Using a nail, I melted it into the bottom of the eye with a washer and a spacer, leaving the head of the nail free as I attached the washer to the top of the plate so that the spacer and the washer remain stationary, but the nail can swivel and turn inside. For this eye mechanism, I had to create an artificial eye socket using popsicle sticks and and hot glue. These eye sockets would secure the latex eyelids back and in place so that as the eyes turn they're not pulling away from the latex. I also connected the eyes with some wood doweling so that as I turn that inside of the puppet the eyes will turn back and forth. As you can see here this is the inner mechanisms. A leather strap hole so I can put my thumb into the tongue and make it wiggle but also secure so I have an anchor for opening 
the top jaw and reach up to move the eyes back and forth. You can also see the bolt hinges I made for the sides. And here you can see them starting to take shape. All the pieces and their form, all the detail, before I start punching hair. Not entirely sure why, other than it being a good place to start at the bottom and work your way up when you're using hair. I began with his more nether regions. Though he looks a little silly now with that tuft of hair on the top of his head, it has actually formed a widow's peak that should merge into the wigs that will be merge together on his back. With the wigs finished and attached, he has become my hairy little crite. Comparatively, Joshua the first that I made about five years ago is quite inferior compared to Joshua the second, thanks to the classes I have been taking. Wouldn't you agree, Joshua? <laughs> Thank you for those kind words, Joshua, but I'm afraid still did not quite turn out as well as I was hoping compared to the puppet I was modeling you after. Nevertheless, you can still boogie. Ah, <laughs>